as a community manager, I spend most of my day emailing people, texting people. I'm just moving text around from one place to another. And very little of it is actually totally unique. And therefore, I use a tool, you know, I've used a couple of tools over the years. Currently, it's called a tool called Typinator. In the past, I've used things called Text Expander, and there's different variants on it for Macs, PCs, probably Linux as well. But the core idea of it is you can create a text abbreviation, and then it will just automatically expand into a full piece of, of text. And you probably have run into this in the past because you can do this in things like Microsoft Word. And the real difference of this is one, you get something which is a bit more sophisticated. And the other part is it works in every app on your computer. And some of these will also actually have mobile apps. You can also use a, a key, custom keyboard on Android or on iOS. So you can use these shortcuts on your, uh, your mobile phone as well, which is especially nice because typing there is a super pain. So let me just show you some examples of what that really looks like. So here's what I do basically every time I create a file. I just write D-D-A-T-E and it expands into the date. So I can just always make sure I'm tagging things with the appropriate date. Another thing I do all the time is I'm going to write URLs out all the time. Kaboom, I just go .net and it spits out in the full URL. Or for my other event site, events, kaboom. Or like, oh, there's that webinar URL. And what exactly was that? And it spits it out. And so this is just a way for me to save some typing to say like, what is that URL whenever I'm sending someone an email or in a web browser? The other thing, of course, is I have a stupidly long last name. So I could type out my whole name, which is like, oh, it's Elijah Vander Giesen, but that's, that's pretty horrific. So I can just do E-E-L-I and spit it all out. And I can also do that with my too long to say over the phone email address. So again, that's a nice way just to save me a couple characters. You can of course do this with longer things too. So maybe I just want to say like, oh, I want my whole home address to be spit out into this document. Boom. You just type, I type H address and, and it spits it out. But of course you could give it any kind of shortcut text. You can also go really long with that. So say you have like a big email and you're going to email 17 people, but you need to customize one or two lines for each one of those outreach emails. So here's an example of that. So I would go, I'm sending emails to makers. So I'd say like the body of a maker email. So I put like B maker as my keyboard thing. And you'll see it pops up here, a little thing where I can define out some autocomplete fields. So I can just say in the system, this has a name field, this has an app field. And so I'll just say, hey, John, Here's help me about the app and the app will be called, I don't know, Asylum Help. And I'll just click OK and boom, it spits out the whole email and you'll see it drop in at the key places, these little like these fill in the blank things. So that's a way for you to send out semi-customized messages via your own email client to a whole dozen people without having to go in to like MailChimp and create a whole big complicated email campaign when you're only doing like maybe 20 of them. And then the last thing I wanna show you is you can also, of course, use it to do fun things. So uh, you can basically give yourself the Slack emoji power where you go colon type a thing and it auto completes. And you can do that again anywhere in your system. So I go like colon rocket and they get up, oh, there it is. It brings up a little pop-up and I can type that and here's my rocket thing. Or I wanna do an emoji like, oh, uh, how about a smiley? There we go, smiley face with tear. Of course, that's what I want. Boom. And so that is how I used this text expander thing just to save me a little bit of grief every day. And it actually has stats showing that I've saved myself hundreds of hours over the years in just typing time through a tool like this. So for a lot of the chapter programs, you're running events. And then, hey, this thing called the pandemic, and now everyone's doing like virtual events, right? So Depending on the scale of your chapter program, it could be kind of small or it could be enterprise. Look at like what Duolingo does, where they just have thousands of chapters and, and members are pretty much running it. So you're going to have different governance kind of levels of either like chapter leads running it or like staff assisting. And so there's so many different models there. So I'm not going to get into the weeds of that. But one of the things that we kind of run into as, as a challenge on, on running events is we're kind of gated to the we can use right and what we have in the budget right so not everybody can afford zoom licenses that's why Derek Anderson originally started Bevy right so in the startup grind they had like 800 chapters 
you can't really afford like 800 Zoom licenses and, and those type of deals. And so when you're running different events, you know, you've got all team or sorry all these different tools from from zoom to, to bevy and all these other great things right and then for chapter lead sometimes you want you have these big events and you want really nice shiny bells and whistles and so you've got different tools out there like the obs and all these things right but then the problem with a lot of these tools is that you're having to download software so then suddenly like you're working with a speaker presenter guest chapter leader trying to get the software installed right so that was like okay so that's that was a nightmare so when I'm working with different chapters and people, you know, basically I was looking for a software that A, was easy to use, browser-based, no software to install, B, really shiny. So when we ran really big events, so if I'm Elijah or Juan, I got a really big event. I've just got Elon Musk like on. I may not want to do like the kind of the run of the mill type of event, right? And also it's something that's going to be like scalable, right? So if we've got chapters, we need something that's going to be easy, something for people to onboard people with and they can be operational with because you don't want to get pinged like every time someone has an issue. And even uh, Zoom a year later, people are still having to rely on IT and other stuff for that. So the tool that I came up with is a tool called uh, Restream.io. And I'll just quickly show that. Tire screen. Sorry. Ah, I should know that'd be better. But whoa, so you can see that, that looks okay. Right, so with, with Restream.io, basically, so what you're gonna kind of look at from a business perspective is their professional package. This isn't like a software plug for them, but really, so you get the white label um, type type deal, right? And so for, for it, what I'm essentially looking at is for the bigger events, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can integrate this in with Zoom and other types of, of things. Or basically for me, just working with kind of at, at a big at a, at a level for the big events. And then with any, anyone that's essentially a chapter lead, they can come in and, and basically set up their own shows. And so you're kind of gated here that you've got one admin for your account. If you're going to get enterprise, you might front level because then at that scale is like you might want a license of restream for North America versus like... Israel versus like Asia versus like Europe, right? And so when you're going into the event thing, the thing I kind of glanced over is like generally, like if you've got a TV station and you're doing programming, you, you know, it's basically you're trying to fill that up. And the same thing with the chapter lead. So if you just had like one account and say you've got chapter teams in Italy and France, but you've only got one license and, and the sort of, you don't want people like, conflicting with, you know, the different times and everyone trying to use the same thing, right? So you can easily segment it out um, for it. So it runs about 50 bucks if you if you need like separating out different types of admin accounts, right? So you've got like different instances that could essentially be like their own TV channels, if that makes sense. And then within using this, it's, it's basically going to be live stream browser based. And I can stream this to any social media channel where, where I have an account. LinkedIn Live is like really the only one. It's a little bit of a um, chore at this point to get up and going. But essentially, I just come in and, and create an event. And as we see, like with one here, I've got the, the, the link or sorry, the YouTube link where I can go grab it. And I've got like Facebook, Twitter and Twitch integrated in. And when I come into the studio, just to quickly show kind of the, the simplicity of this. So you're basically taking a source video, like say a Zoom is, and then through this, it's coming through here and then going to multiple live streaming services. Yeah, so you get to pick. So like in this case, I'll get to, I will turn off my video. So that's a little bit too confusing, but uh, essentially here, so like, you know, which channels do I want to broadcast on? So sometimes I'll see a brand or like a chapter only dedicate to Twitch. It really is going to depend on the region. But the good thing is you can do multi-channel. So instead of just some teams only broadcasting to Twitch, the same 10 people, it's like, hey, if you've got like 500 followers on Twitter, 1,000 followers on Facebook, whatever your case is, or, you know, 3,000 on YouTube, blast it out to all of them. And then the beauty of that is once it's out there, it auto archives, right? So then the only work that you're going to do after the fact is if you want to slice and dice it down into individual segments, right? Um, so you're just going to, you know, so with the basic package that I have today, it's, it's really just going to be out like one instance per channel. There's other ones that have like multiple Facebook pages, multiple YouTube channels, all that stuff. You're going to have to go to uh, larger options. But the beauty of this is just, you know, 
for the bigger events where you really want, so if I'm wanting Columbia and I want to do something nice for the chapter, I can easily go in here, create an event and set that up. And then I basically, I'll walk through a couple of the features here in the admin area, you can have up to 10 people, up to 10 speakers. And then you give the speakers this nice little link and they can come in through their browser and immediately as they come on, you can maximize their screen, turn them on, mute them, all that great stuff. A private chat over here. And so in the private chat, it's just the speaker chat. Because how many times, like if we're like all live with our speakers now and we've got some inside baseball stuff, like stuff here, like, hey, Juan, your video's not playing or stuff you don't want like everybody on the screen to know about. So you get like a private uh, chat area there. The next things that you have really quickly on this is like, how do you actually want to show people on here? So you get like from cinema mode to different ways you can slice and dice basically looking at the screen. The other thing, you know, really quickly going through this is the chat segments and basically aggregates the chat from all the channels that you're sharing to, right? I've seen some teams have one person deployed on Facebook, one person deployed on Twitter, one person deployed on YouTube, and it really becomes a cluster and a mess. So what Restream does, team, right? yeah, so what Restream does, it consolidates everything into this chat tab. So I've got like, regardless of what, wherever I'm broadcasting, all the chats get feed in through here. And if any comment comes in or, or a question, I can click on it and it'll highlight here. It'll show the icon of the channel it's in. It'll show the username of the person asking the question. And then for the person like Juan or, or anyone else, it's like they don't have to go like, where's that question? Because the chat could be going off the charts. They can cleanly see. So we've got Barbara with a question. It's on Facebook. And it's right there caption that's really nicely into the screen. And so it's a really nice way to kind of engage with the audience and and, and some of that stuff, it's a little bit uh, harder to, to do with it. Two other things really quickly on the caption screen. So basically on mine, I can just basically bump out, like when I welcome people onto the screen, it's nice to have like some extra captions and you can do like in the Q and A portion, you can bump it out. So you just got like some CTA, some stuff in there that you can do and you can program these per event or have like some. And then on the nice side of this, when we get into the graphics side is like, themes here you can have all the participants names displayed so if you ever watch like a news station or a sports channel you see the names of the people listed in their little like video camera boxes which you don't get on a lot of tools so you can have that checkbox you can put logos up here in the top right so you can put in the chapter name so you could be like cmx columbia cmx connect chapters you can do like overlays so if you get some fancier stuff here it'll pull in here where it's got that. I'm not using that because it's just like the big blah, blah, blah stuff. And then you can do stuff like video countdown. So I could just come in here, click that right before the show starts and it's not working. Right. No, but that's, um, that's yeah. super cool. Like that, you know, you can sort of take all these multiple sources and basically create like a studio effect. You can like live mix all these different cameras and sources of video together and then take it out to multiple sources. I like that. And you hide that and then you've got like some video backgrounds and static backgrounds and you can upload your own backgrounds and all that all that great stuff so basically for really theming your event depending on the location or depending on the chapter you've got some flexibility as far as that stuff goes and then just everything you're using is out of the box when you want to go live you get the stuff up here and so you've got just for basically 50 bucks a month you know and you times it out by how granular you want to get it because just it's like per admin. And so you're, you're basically treating every license like its own TV channel. So it's basically like CNN USA versus like CNN Europe versus CNN Australia. And really sort of be diligent for how you do that. You give a quick training basically to any of your chapter leaders. And it's so, this thing's so basic that they're gonna be able to run with it. And then there's gonna be a little bit working with IT for you're gonna have to get set up for the channels, you know, just basically integrating it in with the channels. And it's all like just quick you know, just signing in to the, the account, authorizing this as an app, all that great stuff. You can share your audio, video, screen, blah, blah, blah. You can store up to the videos here. It also archives to the channel. And then you can also go back after the fact, and I'll just show you like one screenshot to end it out, where basically you can just do like micro content. So on one variety show that I do, I go back out and segment it out. And so basically there you just get like a nice screenshots and, you know, for really for no money at all, you've got, you know, something that looks, 
basically really scrappy, really easy to use and pretty scalable for getting out and really helping to visually separate yourself out from everything else that's, that's going on, engage different um, audiences that you have out there for like social media instead of just pushing out like Unsplash, Bay graphics to them on social media, really a, a way for them to, to get involved. And, and typically when I run the events, the interesting thing that I'm seeing is like, so I'll get people from like Uzbekistan, which is like why you see it like in a, in a browser tab, because I know I'll like forget that. I'll have people from Uzbekistan, Jordan. So I'll hit like North America, Europe, and Asia, regardless when I'm doing it. So that's what's kind of fascinating. And you'll see kind of like basically three waves of your audience when you're doing these, right? So for the doctors, it, it kind of defies when you do the live stream events. One, the, the audience that's watching it when you're doing it. And then your biggest audience, at least what I'm seeing with a lot of the live stream events that we're doing, uh, the audience is developers, software professionals, but most of the views is in the first 24 hours after the event. So people are treating it more like Netflix, right? So for Usually, like for chapter programs, you want people to attend. And this, because of the last year, and there's 5 billion webinars and virtual events now, it's like people may not want to watch it like right away or have a chance. And so now it's like for your chapter, you've got kind of like a very dynamic way for them to, they might have missed the event when it happened, but they're all watching it within the first 24 hours, right? And so that's where you're going to get a lot of the audience. And then your third is like where you can put the micro content and clips and put that out across the channels. And that can be a, like a really good, like third wave of that content. My life was changed when I figured out that there were apps out there in the world that do this pasteboard kind of thing. And there's loads of different apps on PCs, on Macs that all basically do the same thing. I'm on a Mac and use PasteBot, but you know, they're all essentially the same thing, which is basically, you know, in my case, I just hit like, command option V to bring up my paste. And so what it does is it shows me like basically the last hundred things I copied and pasted. And then just like my other text expansion tool, I can use this anywhere across the app and you could program it and be very sophisticated. But mostly I just say, what was that email address I copied and pasted a half an hour ago? It's there. And that saves me infinite grief because I'm not smart enough like the two of you to set up these Zapier integrations. So that's, so I'm using something called PasteBot right now, but I think they're all very, very similar at their heart. And, uh, and gosh, they should be built into every operating system. They're, they're life-changing. So are you Anyone on else? the free version of PasteBot or did you, you I, I happily paid. I was like, I don't care how much you charge me. I am super excited to give you a lot of money. <laughs> and Talia, did you uh, say yours was a Chrome extension? It looks like PasteBot's a separate yeah, so app. It's called problems. Clipboard History. Yeah, it's called Clipboard History Pro and it's awesome. from extension. Yeah, I guess that's something that is like system operated is even better than just the Chrome. So this is this is the image and this is it. It's just, it's called a uh, color picker. And then I want to to like see what's the what's the number of this specific thing. And then I I can see above. Did you saw that mm -hmm. and then it's showing me like the specific color i just saw and you can do that on any website on any asset whatever you like and want so if you're doing a bit of design it's really helpful yeah to get the actual right color as opposed to something that's almost the right color <laughs> yes yes <laughs> if you have like a strict brand managers and designers you want to be right this is descript and what it does is it ties this text to the video. And that's super amazing because you can make really nice edits really easily to video because editing video is, is hard and time consuming. But we got this thing here, which Rebecca says like, oh, so just to back it up a bit, I'm like, well, that's actually not necessary for the video. So I'm just going to highlight it and delete it. And it, that section is now no longer in the video. And so it means you can edit text, which is easy and it makes edit to the video as well, which is amazing. And you'll see down here in the lower bar, you'll see like, oh, like she had like this big gap between that and privilege. And I'm like, well, it was kind of unnecessary. Let me just tighten it up. So I'm just going to drag that and bring it over here. And there we go. That's going to just like tighten up the little section. And so that allows you to make super quick edits to the video from the script. You can also, of course, edit this because machine translation is often wrong. And so you go like, oh, it's not actual 
let's just find like a mistake in here. I've seen a really big shift at first. Okay, so this is kind of weird. So I'm just gonna delete that as well. Just say I don't need at first. So I'm just gonna get rid of that, delete it, boom. And so once you've done this and edited this, you can then go and share it. And because you've got this text, you can do a couple interesting things. You could export it just as a straight up transcript. So you could like say like, yeah, I want a transcript of this video. Boom, done. But you could also of course go and export it in all kinds of different other ways. So if you are super pro, you can export it in like Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro. So just think of this as like your rough edit tool and then your pros can like really tweak it up. You can also create subtitled files for this. You can upload it to YouTube or you can create things like these little audiograms, which is just like sort of like little social media friendly file. But the thing I most often do with this is I take a webinar, I do a quick review and I say like, oh, here was a really interesting sentence. I'm gonna just cut and paste that to like minute section. And basically from there, I'm just gonna go and clip that into something new. And you clip it into something new and then I now have like, like a little, you know, 20 second like video clip that I can then share on social media. And it's a nice little post event thank you I can do it to sort of, you know, promote the work that happened from my event. So uh, that's what I do with Descript. And it made me feel much more capable of doing video edits, even though I'm actually terrible at doing video edits that because so often we have a whole video team but they don't have time to make edits to our webinars and as we're sharing archives and building those into other learning tools and other resources we want to make available to the community it's nice to be able to add the closed captioning on and to grab those sound bites and use on social i think is really smart so thank you for sharing that one